Hello, and thanks for joining us today on the Political Conversationalist. My name is Ben Phipps, and today we're talking about kingdoms and empires. Uh, we kind of imagine them to be a thing of the past, but it's not wholly true. Uh, kingdoms are very closely related to autocracies in a lot of ways, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time on those. But when we think of a kingdom or a monarchy, we think of a king or a queen holding absolute power over pretty much everyone in their kingdom. And that's what we would call a traditional monarchy or traditional kingdom. Uh, the converse of that would be like a constitutional monarchy. A constitutional monarchy is something like what we have in England today. We have Queen Elizabeth II, who uh, enjoys a lot of power, but most of the power of the nation is split up between Parliament and Prime Minister and other offices that are more democratically represented. So that's kind of the most common type of monarchy today. There are a couple, I would say, direct monarchies or absolute monarchies today. Uh, the most, the biggest one probably being Saudi Arabia. And uh, they do have a constitution, so you got me there. It's a constitutional monarchy. But in that constitution, it states that the king is kind of above all the other, um, all the other offices of the land, and there's no reason they can't supersede them if they need to. Now, empires normally start, at least in antiquity, they started as a, a monarchy. A lot of them started with a king or a queen or a prince or whatever. But an empire is some uh, a situation in which you have one sovereign nation that controls multiple territories. Um, the difference between this and a federation is kind of blurry, but a federation uh, tends to give the states or provinces equal footing and equal rights uh, between each other, between each state. For instance, although they're not equally represented in uh, something like the Electoral College, it's pretty comparable to compare Delaware and Utah. They're both states and they both have two senators and they both have congressmen and things like that. They're fairly equal. Well, that's not the same way an empire works. For instance, the Roman Empire um, was controlled by Rome. I know that's a huge surprise. But it was controlled by the city-state of Rome. And uh, all their territories were controlled by Rome. They didn't have representatives. And they had people to run things down there, but they weren't like voted on by uh, people who didn't live in Rome or voted on, voted on by the, uh, the North Africans in the territory they took or uh, the Palestinians in the territory they took. It was the city-state of Rome controlled all that territory. And uh, that's probably the biggest empire that's ever existed, not land area-wise, but as far as population. In fact, it was estimated that one quarter of people alive at the time lived and died under Roman rule. And I don't think that's ever going to be topped in human history. Uh, I, I can't imagine that ever being topped in the future. But um, it, it was very important to drive in this point that it was a Roman country, the country of Rome, controlled all the territory around it. They didn't incorporate it into part of Rome. It was controlled by Rome. Uh, and there's a very obvious, uh, a more recent example of that would be England. They uh, controlled Australia and India and Canada and uh, the United States, but they never really incorporated them and gave them the rights of a state or a province. Um, but I'm not going to go with that really obvious one, and I want to kind of push the boundaries of what an empire empire can be considered. So we're going to talk about the United States. Uh, the United States has 50 states that enjoy statehood or incorporation. They have congressmen, they have senators, they have governors, they have representation to the federal government, and they all can do trade and business with each other and things like that. However, the United States also has territories. They have Guam and Puerto Rico and the Northern Marianas Islands, and uh, I'm sure I'm forgetting some. Uh, American Samoa, mm, the U.S. Virgin Islands, there we go. They have all those territories, and they're not states. Those territories don't have really representation in the federal government, although some of we'll talk about in a later video how they technically have a, a representative in Congress. But they really don't have representation on a federal level, and they're controlled by the country of the United States. They are not de facto part of the United States. Uh, so, yes, you can consider those territories and the U.S. put together to make an empire. Similar to the way in uh, the city-state of Rome controlled Palestine and northern Africa, and all that together made an empire. 
So I hope you learned something today. Hope I hammered in the difference between a federation and an empire. And uh, maybe broaden the horizons of what you can consider an empire. Although its detractors have called America an empire for a long time. Uh, also, don't worry too much, no matter how much the past five or six presidents really wanted to be an emperor. It's not really possible <laughs> due to the Constitution, you know, all the people who would pitch a fit about it. So thanks for watching. Hope you learned something today. Uh, let me know if you did in the comments. Let me know if I'm wrong about something in the comments. Like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Thanks.